Welcome to this clip. My name is Marike Koten and I will explain the difference between transmission and distribution networks. Then I will discuss how we can solve these electrical networks and overcome their challenges. But first, let us analyze the classification of electrical networks. There exist two types. On the one hand, we have the transmission network, as you see here. You can see the big producers and the high voltage network that transport the electricity from these producers to cities or factories. And then it goes into the distribution network. In general, an electrical distribution network is a low voltage network that is more localized. Think about a city or a part of it, or a small group of small industries where only a limited amount of power is consumed. It is to be noted that the models of the transmission and distribution networks are different. Moreover, these networks are standalone, so we have a separate simulation for the transmission network and the distribution network. Due to the penetration of renewable energy sources like wind and solar, the goal is to couple the transmission and distribution networks and to do the simulation on this coupled network. Now let us focus on the main differences between, between these two networks. A transmission network has more of a mass structure, which means that the cities through which the electricity flows are interconnected, ensuring reliability. On the other hand, the distribution network is more localized. For example, the street or no neighborhood of a particular city. Here you have one connection point and energy is stepped from this point and transported downstream. This is termed a radial or tree-like network structure. Both transmission and distribution networks have three phases. But in the transmission network, they are balanced and in the distribution network, they are unbalanced. The consequence is that for a transmission network, it is sufficient to simulate only one phase. Because all phases are in balance, the other phases will simply be a phase shift of the simulated phase. Due to its unbalanced nature, you have to compute all three phases separately in a distribution network. The responsibility of these two separate networks lies with two different utilities. In the Netherlands, the transmission network is handled by only one transmission system operator, a TSO utility called TENET. In contrast, the distribution network is the responsibility of different parties like Alliander or Steden, also known as distribution system operators, or DSOs for short. It is to be noted that the TSO and DSOs operate separately. This can lead to problems such as limited information sharing due to privacy issues. Hence, it is not easy to simulate both the networks in a coupled manner. So what do we need to simulate these networks? We need some kind of solver that can simulate distribution networks, transmission networks, and the coupled network. It is evident that the reliability of the network is the goal of the simulation. Different properties of the network are used as input to the solver, such as the voltage, the resistance of power lines, the generated power, and coupling of the different lines. Note that in all nodes at each instant, the energy conservation property should be satisfied. In the end, we want to have an optimal operation of the different networks. We already have such a solver for the individual networks, but how can we simulate both networks together? There are two approaches we can use, and let's start with a decoupled one. The electrical transmission and distribution networks go separately, separately into their own solvers and then iterate to know what happens. For example, the information from a transmission network is sent to the distribution solver. Then the distribution part is solved and the obtained solution is sent back to the transmission solver. This is done a couple of times until we get a certain convergence or in other terms, until the solution is satisfactory. The other option is the coupled solver, where simulations are done together. Here, both the transmission network and the distribution network are described by their own models. Those are combined in one big problem, and then we have one common solver that tackles the problem. Hopefully, the solution is the same as what is done in a decoupled solver, but the paths taken are different. 
There are certain problems associated to solving coupled transmission and distribution networks. Let us analyze those. Firstly, if we solve both the networks separately, we get a unique solution for the distribution network, the transmission network, and the coupled network. Remember that it's not a linear problem, which means that we cannot add the results together. Instead, we have to do that in an integrated way. Another problem encountered is that there are many equations. Questions such as, can we use them? Do we need to use them all? Or can we only partly use these equations arise? When we discussed the difference between the two networks, we mentioned the differences in the balancing, balancing of the networks and needing to simulate only one or all three phases. This leads to having two different simulation techniques. We must determine if it's best to do decoupled or coupled simulation, both for the transmission and the distribution grid. And also, how can we combine them accurately and efficiently? Next, we have a very crucial problem. By law, it is not always allowed to transmit data from the TSO to the DSO or the other way back, which makes it hard to solve a coupled system. Thus, sometimes we cannot use the best or the most optimal solver because we do not have sufficient data available. This also means that it's not only a problem for the mathematics or the physics point of view, but it also becomes a ju juridical and ethical issue. In the future, the interaction between these different network owners should become possible. Finally, if insufficient data is available and a coupled simulation is required, we can still do it, but it becomes more challenging to couple the two systems. Let us summarize. We explained that the transmission grid is meshed, balanced and requires only a single phase simulation as opposed to the distribution grid. Also, both parts are handled by different entities. Then, we saw that it's needed to couple them in the future. For this, two methods can be used, a decoupled and a coupled approach. Finally, we have seen that there are challenges when coupling the two networks. These include the nonlinearity of the solutions, insufficient data exchange, and a different type of simulation needed for each network. Thanks for joining today.